Welcome back. Our next guest is speaking out for the first time on camera regarding the lawsuit she filed against Nicki Minaj and her husband, Kenneth Petty, a lawsuit accusing them of harassment and intimidation, among other charges. We believe that all women's voices have the right to be heard, which is why we invited her to come here today. Please welcome Jennifer Huff and her lawyer, Tyrone Blackburn. Welcome, guys. Yeah, welcome to the show, Jennifer and Tyrone. I think, Jennifer, I know this is not an easy thing for you to do, so we're going to take our time. Um, after being silent for so long, why are you here speaking up today? I'm tired of being afraid. I feel like um, the actions that were that were taken um, in regards to this whole situation have put me in a different type of fear at my age now and it was it was wrong and I don't want to be afraid anymore so the only way not to be afraid is to can you is to continue to speak up now Jennifer I'm gonna read because I don't want to make a mistake because this no. is an important story um, though Kenneth Petty first denied the rape charges he was charged with first-degree rape subsequently pleaded guilty to attempted rape and spent over four years in prison according to the inmate records did you feel that justice was served? I, I don't think I thought about justice per se because I was still blaming myself. Okay. I thought it was something that I did or didn't do. So I don't, I don't think I thought about if I got justice, I didn't. I just knew he did what he did and he went to jail and I, I had to leave my family, I had to leave my home and I had to move away. So, yeah, I never really gave it much thought. How has this affected you emotionally over the years? In so many ways. Hiding within myself living and surviving through insecurities, using them to protect myself, thinking that if I don't look a certain way, I won't attract a certain type of attention. Okay. And I've been like that my whole life. Jennifer, let's move forward. When it was announced that Kenneth Petty was marrying Nicki Minaj, what was your first thought about that news? I was so afraid of being found out. I was so afraid of being known as the person he violated, and I didn't want that. Jennifer, have you ever spoken to Nikki directly? I did, in March of 2020. She called me, and she said that she got word that I was willing to help them out in a situation. I, I didn't understand what she was referring to. Um, she offered to fly me and my family to L.A., she, um, I turned it down and I told her, woman to woman, this really happened. And I hadn't spoken to her since. Now you allege that Nikki and Kenneth were harassing you, in what way? With them sending people to negotiate numbers as far as money is concerned with family members. And Nikki is the one who personally reached out to me. She's, you know, in regards to helping her, helping them in this situation. And then the threats that I received because I kept saying no to every offer, to every suggestion. The last um, incident was when um, one of their associates put $20,000 on my lap and I st still kept saying no. The last message I received was that I should have taken the money because they're going to use that money to put on my head. What are you guys wanting to come from this lawsuit? To let them know that they were wrong and you can't do this to people. You shouldn't do this to people. He did something a, a long time ago and, and he had consequences that he was supposed to stick with. What they did to me and my family wasn't okay. It wasn't right, and it doesn't matter how much money you have, it doesn't matter what your status is. You can't intimidate people to make things go better for you. And 
and that's what they did. And I want my daughters to know that as they grow, as they experience life, as they come in contact with friends, family, strangers, or whatever, that, 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 they'll be, that they'll have the strength to know that they have a voice and, and they should use it. And don't ever let anybody try to silence them. So I decided to make this video because I feel like even though it's something that happened 26 years ago, I'm still living with the effects now. On September 16th, 1994, it was a Friday morning. I left my home on my way to a city bus stop headed to school. I was going to John Adams High School at the time in Queens, New York, and I was met at the bus stop by Mr. Kenneth Petty. At the time, um, I knew him as Kenny. Um, we grew up in the same neighborhood. My mother and his mother used to run the streets together. Um, his uncle worked at the local tire shop that was there on Rockaway Boulevard. Um, I didn't know his whole family, but there was a few members of his family that knew me and my brothers because of who my mother was. Um, on this day, I went to the bus stop and Kenny was there at the bus stop. Um, he asked me where I was going. I said I was going to school. I asked him where he was going. He said he was going to school. I said, you're lying because I never knew Kenny to go to school. Kenny was a bum. He was a street guy. He was a dude that was always standing on a street corner. He was hanging out with street dudes. He was, that's what I knew him for. I knew him as a street drug dealer. Um, unfortunately, this day ended up really bad because he forced me into his home. He violated me. Um, and granted, this was only three blocks away from my house. I chose not to go home because I figured if I went home, nothing would get done. And I knew the kind of friends that Kenny hung out with, and I felt like they would feel that they could do the same. So instead, I ran to school. I ran to school. My clothes was messed up. My hair was messed up. I had a cut on my face and I had a cut on my stomach. Um, and I told the officers there at the school what had just happened. They called for more police. They put me in a police van. They asked me if I could show them the location where it happened. I took them to the location, which happened to be his house. I did not know it was his house at the time. I had never been to his house. Kenny was still there. He got arrested. Um, they took me to the hospital. I had to do a rape kit and everything. They took my clothes. They took everything from me and put it in a paper bag and they seized it. When I got home, I was told, sorry, you got raped, but you should have screamed. Hence the reason why I didn't go home to begin with. When all of this happened, I was living with the foster family. And because I was living with the foster family, they didn't want any issues and they didn't want any problems. So they listened to whatever Kenny's parents said. Kenny's parents showed up at my house they spoke to the lady who raised me. They told all kind of lies and said that I was dating their son, which I didn't even know Kenny's dad. I didn't even know who he was, but he claimed he knew who I was. The amount of stuff that I went through at that time, I literally had to get out of the state of New York when I was 16 years old in a hurry because people was threatening my life. They was threatening my little brother's lives. I had issues going on in the house with within family members because they felt like, you know, what made me so special to where I get suppressed charges against somebody who violated me when 
you know, in most families, there are secrets and there are things that are covered up and hidden and not talked about. And usually sexual assault is one of those things. I have been molested since the age of four in that household by different people. Um, it was always said to be my fault. I must have had my hair out. I must have been smiling in his face. I must have done something to warrant it. So when this happened outside in the street versus at home with so-called family members, I knew I had to do something. So this was in 94. In 2018, December of 2018, um, or 19, I don't know, that he surfaced with Nikki and it was a big thing where people um, started looking up his rap sheet and speaking about what he had did. Now, granted, I know he's supposed to register as a sex offender. I have nothing to do with that. That was the plea deal that he took. He chose not to register when he moved to California. And this is when all the trouble resurfaced. Nikki made a post on her page stating that we was in a relationship. He was 15, I was 16, and it was because of my mother, the reason why charges was pressed. That is a lie. I never lived with my mother. I wasn't raised with my mother, even though my mother was a part of my life. She wasn't a part of my life in that way. Um, That is false. We both, Kenny and I were both 16 at the time. Um, We were never in a relationship. Um, and I spoke about that. I spoke to a blog, Candace at, at tea time or tea time with Candace. I don't know something. Um, I spoke with her and it wasn't about Kenny. I didn't need to speak about Kenny. I didn't feel the need to tell my story because my story had already been told. Hence the reason why he was arrested, he went to jail, he did his time, and he dealt with whatever consequences he had to deal with after getting out of jail. Um, So what I spoke about, the reason for me wanting to speak was because of what Nikki said. And I felt like it was a lie, and if she was going to love him and be with him, then she should just accept him and that be it, you know, not speak about something that she had no knowledge of. I don't know Nikki. I didn't know her as a kid. I don't know her from the neighborhood. I do have family members that know her from the neighborhood, but I wasn't a street girl. I wasn't allowed to hang out in the streets. I didn't have very many friends in the neighborhood. I had friends in school, but not in the neighborhood because the lady I lived with was really strict. Well, in March of 2020, Um, I got a call from a mutual friend of Kenneth and my brother, and he said that he could connect me to them and make this go away. And when he said he could connect me to them, meaning Nikki and Kenny, and when he said he could make this go away, I thought the agreement was going to be if I don't speak to anybody about them, they wouldn't speak to anybody about me end of story. Well, that's not what happened. What happened was um, this mutual person offered me $20,000 to write a letter stating that I lied about what I did. I lied about Kenny assaulting me Um, and I didn't want to do it. Um, I got a phone call from Nicki Minaj herself saying that she got word that I was willing to help them out in this situation because, you know, Kenny had got arrested for not registering in the state of California um, on state charges, and then he got out, and then federal charges were brought up on him. So she said that she could send her publicist, Joe, out to where I was living at the time. I have since moved multiple times since then, but... um that she can send Joe out, her publicist Joe out to meet with me and talk with me about the situation. After that phone call with Nikki, the only contact I had was from street goons. Um, I think she has somebody in her camp called Ganks. Um, 
he was contacting family members. Um, there was a lot of numbers as far as money um, being offered, um, but it was never offered from Nikki and it was never offered from Kenny personally. It was just people speaking on behalf of Kenny. I have since had the U.S. Marshals come track me down um, because they got word that I was being harassed to recant my story. Um, I have moved since March. I have moved four times um, due to people approaching my children. Um, my daughter was out one night with some friends at a club and some random guy approached her talking about he knows who she is and you know he knows who her mother is so she must know who zoo is she got really afraid and she ran um i honestly truly do not care what happens between nikki and whoever she chooses to marry or be with um if they're happy i want them to be happy i just want them to leave me alone um, I want the, his lawyers to stop calling me. I want people to stop harassing me. I have since heard that he, um, that because I chose not to take the money that they offered, that they are offering that money for my head. Um, I have no true knowledge of how real this is, but being I get um, I was offered to be put in witness protection, but that would mean that I would be away from all of my family and my children, and I chose not to do that. Um, my only issue is the fact that after all this time, I still feel like I'm defending myself. I still feel like, you know, people are calling me a liar. People are saying that I'm you know, I messed up this man's life, but it's my life who was messed up. It's my life who has been altered. Um, it's my life. It was altered then when I was 16, having to leave the state of New York. It has been altered now, having to leave where I was living at to relocate. Um, he's supposed to be going to court come the new year, and they're calling for me to testify um, his lawyers are saying that they are trying to get his um, sex offender thrown out. Um, and I instructed the lawyer, like, you're the one who went to school to be a lawyer. So if you're able to do that, knock yourself out. But do not use me. Do not call me. Do not try to subpoena me. Because if you do, I'm going to tell the truth. At 16, I was being threatened and harassed to drop the charges. And now I'm being threatened and harassed to recant my story. And I would just like all the women out there who are saying that I'm lying or claiming that I'm white. I am not white. Um, claiming that we was in a relationship. We were never in a relationship ever in a relationship. I just knew him from the neighborhood. That's it. 